Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Warzone In Depth. In today's episode, I want to share with you my maximum mobility best FFAR class. I've been trying to find something to break the meta, and I think this absolutely does it. The FFAR class I've built today is excellent. It works in almost every situation, and I think it's going to become the default meta weapon in the future. Currently, the FFAR is a popular weapon to back up your sniper rifle or specialty weapon. If you're running a sniper, a crossbow, a riot shield, or just something that doesn't have a whole lot of versatility, the FFAR is one of those weapons that a lot of people like to have in their back pocket because it has great close quarters combat time to kill, but still enough bullet velocity to work at medium range. So, in theory at least, you can challenge SMG users up close and still be decent in rifle fights at long ranges while maintaining that specialty weapon for whatever purpose. Purpose. Right now, that sort of all-purpose assault rifle is the CR-56 AMAX, and you can, can see by this little comparison chart we got from True Game Data that the FFAR does kill slightly faster than the, F than the CR-56 AMAX up close, but starts to lose out a little bit at long ranges, and it loses out pretty significantly when it comes to recoil and like real-life handling. Overall, I tried to use the FFAR to be like really good up close and I kind of struggled with it because SMG users were just faster than me, but we're going to fix that today. I found just the right attachment that's going to make the FFAR way faster, and that most important attachment for your FFAR is the Raider stock, which is the last stock that you're going to unlock. It says better sprint to fire time and aim walking movement speed with worse hip fire, and that's exactly what it is, but it's very extreme on all of these things. The first set of effects of the Raider stock is that it reduces reduces your tactical sprint out time by 117 milliseconds, which is insanely fast. I've ever not, actually never seen a reduction that big in Modern Warfare or Warzone. And it reduces your regular sprint out time by 84 milliseconds. So that's a ridiculous reduction. I wanted to show you a slow motion comparison of the two a few times here. The regular FFAR is on the left and the one with the Raider stock is on the right. And you can see that the Raider stock clearly sprints out faster and starts shooting faster from tactical sprint, which is what you'll mostly be doing in Warzone. It's the biggest difference and that's just great. You know, you just get to shoot your bullets a little bit faster. But what makes this way better is the second set of effects. You have a 39% increase in your aim down sights movement speed, which is your strafing speed, kind of like Stalker from Modern Warfare 3. And that's insane. That's one of the biggest improvements I've seen maybe ever. However, you do have a massive hip fire spread penalty. It's 70% wider hip fire spread, which is just bad. That's just... That's brutal in a lot of ways. It makes the hip fire kind of problematic, but you can strafe stupidly fast. I wanted to show that same comparison again with the regular FFAR on the left and the plus 40% one with the Raider stock on the right. And you can see I'm just, I'm winning this race almost over. If I, we were to keep going, I just lap this person. And the left right sprinting is really fast. It will be immediately noticeable to you when you equip it in game to try it out yourself at the end of this episode. I do have to tell you though, the strafe speed was so fast, I actually had to relearn how to aim in Warzone to get used to it. So I usually don't strafe a whole lot in Warzone. A lot of the weapons don't allow me to do that while I'm shooting. And especially in Black Ops Cold War, I was really attracted to a lot of attachments that reduced recoil. And one of the things they also reduced is your aim walking movement speed so when you start shooting you just kind of stand still as i was working through this episode trying to get good and master this so in the course of making this episode my first four to five games were pretty rough some of you probably saw it on stream i was cursing a lot i couldn't aim i felt like a boomer i thought i was losing my mind but then i realized i was actually strafing so fast i wasn't used to aiming like that in call of duty so i had to take the time to relearn how to aim a little bit to get used to it to get good at it and once i mastered it it felt way better. It felt like I was playing a faster paced game, more like Apex or Overwatch and a little bit less like Call of Duty. So that strafing speed is the biggest and most important benefit, but honestly, the sprint out times are awesome too. Both of these are just godly things in close quarters combat fights with SMG users and other AR users that are gonna rush you. It, the strafe speed will help you corner peek faster and dodge mid fight. So if you just wanna corner peek and just see what's going on, strafe in and out, you can do that faster and get back to safety more so than your enemy. Matter of fact, you can just ADS corner more effectively than your enemies. And the sprint out time reductions are an actual godsend too, because those just reduce your overall theoretical time to kill. Albeit, it'll take you a little bit to aim down sights. You probably won't hit a whole ton of shots with your hip fire, but you can still start shooting and going down into ADS if people are close to you, which is exactly what it's for. Here's the TTK chart from True Game Data that shows what happens when you factor in 
the sprint out time on the FFAR versus the CR56 AMAX, and you can see that there is a massive improvement right there that makes it a much better weapon. And you can even throw the AS Val in there as well, pretty much fully loaded with their best attachments. And if, once you include the sprint out time, the FFAR really pretty much outperforms all of them. It's really an impressive weapon. These are the these are the up close monster rifles, but the FFAR is just doing a better job than them. So yeah, that Raider stock is the most important part of today's video. You've learned the, the, the big facts, but we've got some other ones to go over to kind of round out the class. The Salvo 50 round fast mags will let you reload about a half second faster and give you bigger mags, but with no penalty. There's no ADS penalty, no recoil penalty. It's almost a pure bonus attachment. And since the gun shoots so fast, since you're gonna be spraying so much, and since a lot of you are gonna be learning to strafe shoot kind of the way I did, having a giant magazine is pretty nice. I run the field agent grip on this one, which greatly reduces horizontal and vertical recoil, but the FFAR still kind of kicks a lot. I, don't, I didn't decide to go for a minimum recoil class because I'm not really planning to use it on long ranges. However, no matter what the in-game stats say, it has no move speed or ADS penalties at all. It's a pure bonus attachment, which is great. And a lot of you have criticized me, saying you don't like my text descriptions of recoil. You want to see plots, kind of like what Ace and J-God did. This is my very first attempt at a recoil plot with the regular FFAR on the right in yellow and the FFAR with the field agent grip on the left in red. You can see the initial shots are far tighter with the field agent grip. It's overall more predictable. And you can see that I get a lot more shots on the target before it kicks up too high, though admittedly, both are fairly high recoil. I just, I just run them to tighten up my initial shots and make the weapon a little bit easier to handle. The next set of attachments I use is the agency suppressor, which increases bullet velocity 25% and range by 10%. These are great. You get an ADS penalty of 20 milliseconds, which is a little bit more than a frame. Not tremendously. You probably won't notice it. Also, it'll keep you off the radar. I think you guys running around in Warzone with unsuppressed loadout weapons are crazy. I have to have a suppressor on just about everything because I hate being on the radar and I hate bringing attention to myself. You want to use the Ranger Barrel, which oddly has the best range, but I'm done. Good pun right there. You get a minor aim down sights move speed penalty at 2%, so technically now we're only strafing at a bonus 37%. Big whoop. However, you get a giant bonus to your bullet velocity by 57%, which is very nice. It'll help you out in long range fights. And the end result of all of this kitting of your weapon is that you have a very high mobility FFAR, much higher mobility than the other assault rifles, that has a very fast close quarters combat time to kill and even medium range time to kill with excellent bullet velocity and range to help you out in your long range fights. It's a really solid weapon. You can shred SMG users, you can fight people at medium range, you can knock down the AMAX boys. However, there are two downsides to this weapon that are inherent to my kidding of it, and well, maybe one just that's inherent to the weapon itself. Number one is that the hipfire box almost doubles in size. That's kind of a rough one. I do like to move and jump around and hip fire spray people in Warzone, but I think that it's minimal given the fact that the biggest benefit is the ADS strafe, strafe, strafe speed. I'm mostly just aiming down sights and strafing around. But if you like to hip fire a lot, it's going to be pretty bad for you. The second one is that you do have about one frame slower ADS. That's a very minor penalty overall. However, you are doing close quarters combat, and every little bit helps, so slowing it down isn't ideal. Those are the only downsides inherent to my kidding, and I think they're mostly negligible as long as you like to fight while aiming down sights. As long as you plan to use this weapon to aim down sights and corner peek and check people and use it within the appropriate ranges, it's going to be fine. And I said within the appropriate ranges because even with the additional foregrip attachment, it's still a high recoil weapon. At the end of the day, the FFAR kicks a lot. It shakes a lot. It has a lot of gas ejection. It has a lot going on with it. It's not the easiest weapon to control. The Kilo and the AMAX are far easier to control than this one. This one takes a higher degree of mastery, but it does pay off. But even at the high degree of mastery, I don't think it does great at like really long ranges. I can't full auto people at long ranges, so I just kind of one shot harass them. The glass shreds people up close while giving you superior mobility to most enemies. It's really solid. I had a good time playing with it. I got a lot of great gameplay. I've noticed that a lot of people are already making FFAR classes. I'm probably a little bit late to the party on this one. I hope I have. Hopefully the stock is like really like a big secret reveal and somebody else didn't do it last month. But I was really happy with my end result. I feel like the FFAR is going to be a very popular weapon for aggressive players. If you like to snipe and push, 
so that you get the pick and then you push with your whole squad. The FFAR is perfect for that. As long as you're not planning a whole lot of long range spray down LMG and rifle fights, it's great. It's perfectly acceptable to use against SMG users. Yes, the MAC-10 might kill you a little bit faster or the Bullfrog if you get a lot of headshots, but it's not gonna be fast enough to notice for the most part and it's still gonna feel like the FFAR kills really quickly. So I think it's a great backup weapon. If I were to just play, so I'm not, I don't normally snipe in Warzone. It's not my normal go-to. I'll usually have a low recoil rifle and then a bullet hose SMG and let my squad snipe. But when it's my turn to snipe or use the crossbow or something like that, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be leaning on the FFAR. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed this episode of In-Depth. I hope you try out my class. And if you did any of those things, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.